Welcome to Radio Veritas TV. Ah, 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 what? Ah, it did something. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. Radio Veritas TV. Radio Veritas TV. Okay. Hi, I'm Emma. Hi, I'm Reese. And, and we, we are Catholic, Catholic and we, we go, go to St. Teresa's School. Hello, my name is Nunzi Zonkosi. I am a Catholic. I wasn't originally born a Catholic, but then I joined Catholic because I love the, the religion and more especially um, as I went through it and then learned of their teachings, I began to love it even more. And also because of the way that I feel when I'm in church, there's this sense of belonging that I feel, this warmth, and I feel and I believe that it's the love from God. My name is Charlotte Swartz and I'm not a Catholic, I'm Christian, but I follow and respect the Catholic values. Um, I go to a Catholic school and I really respect the Catholic values and the way that they follow life. Hello everyone, my name is Zenani Mashinini. I was born Methodist. I converted into Catholicism, mainly because I went to a Catholic school, Macaulay House, and I began to enjoy Catholicism and how we would go to mass and how we'd praise God. We are Catholics! You are watching Karibu Nyumbani with Father Howie Nguyenya. Hi, my name is Father Howie Ricardo Nguyenya from the Diocese of Clerks Dop, a parish priest in Calvary Parish, Pochestrum. I welcome you to our program Karibu Nyumbani. You remember that in Psalm 122, it says, I rejoice when I hear them say, let us go to the house of the Lord. So this program is designed for converts, people who were of a certain belief, system or people who are not even not believing but now are coming into our catholic fold are coming into our catholic faith we want to learn from them what could have led them to come to our catholic fold so we want to hear of their experiences outside the catholic realms we want to learn from them we want to hear to see the, the grandeur the splendor of our church outside our own perspective so today in our program we have got a lovely and a beautiful guest miss debbie simons uh, Ms. Debbie Simons, as a convert, she has got a lovely story, a long story that she will share with us of how she converted into our faith because she was once baptized as an infant and now she came back to our Catholic fold and she has got a lot of stories to share. Some of them, they range even from confessions, the power of confessions. Some of, her, of those stories, they range even to how the family they helped her in discovering herself, discovering her spiritual journey. So I believe you'll be keen to listen to what Debbie ought to say or has to say or share with us. Now today, you can also be asking yourself, what led me to this faith? Because you're not quest to come to church. You are not quest to come to, the, to, the, to our fold, to our faith. You are not quest. No one is having anything against you or telling you that if you don't go to church, I will beat you or do something to you. But now since you're not quest, what led you? As Debbie will be sharing with us of her life experience and journey, you can also become part of this program by also coming to recall your own experiences. Now, Miss Debbie Simons, can you please, before we start, how are you feeling? I'm okay, thank you. And you are very beautiful and lovely. I'm thank not you so much. <laughs> yes. Now, Miss Debbie, can you introduce yourself? They need to hear who you are, where you're coming from, and what you have to share with us. Um, my name is Debbie Simons. Um, I'm a professional nurse and I work night duty. And at the moment I'm attending Mass at St. Augustine's Church in Charmiston with Father Ron. You are a professional nurse? Yes. So you have heard of Florence Nightingale? <laughs> oh, beautiful, yes. beautiful, beautiful nurse. So we had our nurses day because that's the day that Florence was actually born. So it's like International Nurses Day where all the nurses are honored on that day. No. That wow, enjoy. that that is beautiful. Yes. You're really a professional nurse from St. Augustine in Boxpeck, yes. Miss Davy. Yes, Debbie Simons. You heard from her. And now, Debbie, may you share with us. May you share with us your life experience, your journey and what led to your conversion into the Catholic faith. Okay, it all started basically I used to listen to Radio Veritas. And so, because I work night duty, I have to keep busy. So at half past nine, it used to switch over to EWTN. 
which is the show, the a radio and television show from the States. Yes. So then I started listening to that. And then there was a show on Journey Home or Coming Home where the first interview that I actually heard was this, uh, a Jewish guy who then became a Catholic and what led him to become a Catholic. Beautiful. So then after 12 hour time, there's another show that comes on, it's called Catholic Answers. And so people used to phone in to the studio to what questions. And then uh, uh, anthropologists, the Christian anthropologists would then answer them. And a lot of that, the questions was all about confessions and being in a state of grace. And then I started asking myself the question about confession. I wanted to know more and I started listening more. And then I remembered, but I last confessed when I was 11 years old. And that was like many years ago. Many years. Yes, it's been yeah. many, quite many years ago. So then my, my brother-in-law is a born Catholic. So my sister actually converted to a Catholic when she got married. Yes. So then I spoke to them about confessions. And then they told me, look, you can go to confessions. And then all you need to do is to say, Father, bless me for I have sinned. And then you tell him all your confessions. And then, so I went the first time, and then I told the father, and then I said, but also I'm not a Catholic. And then he asked me, are you baptized? And I said, yes. Then he said, okay, I can listen to your confession. We'll say a prayer together, but I won't be able to give you absolution. And then I said, okay. So I did that. And then the following, that this was like of November, two years ago. Then the following year, during Lent, uh, there's a priest, Father Joseph, and then he was talking about, um, it was Divine Mercy Sunday, going to be Divine Mercy Sunday. So then he was talking about what confessions you should do before you go for Divine Mercy, yeah. and then on before Divine Mercy Sunday. So then I went back. To, ch to church and I s explained that we were told, I heard about this confessions that we need to do. So then Father again said that you won't be able, you'll, be, you'll hear my confessions, but you won't be able to give me that absolution. So then Father said, why don't you become a Catholic? Then I said, I'm thinking about it. So then I made an appointment with him to actually go and see him and then we spoke. And then it came from there where, where he then told me about RCI classes that I need to attend and things like that, you see. So that's how I then got interested and started learning a bit more about it. Yes, yes, David, don't stop. I'm <laughs> waiting to hear about now once you were really brought back to the Catholic fold by the priest. Yes. And um, what happened? What happened? Did you go for confession again? Did they give you absolution? And how did you feel after the absolution? I'm interested in that. I must say, after even after my first confession, mm -hmm. and Father prayed with me, and then he actually told me to also say a prayer, and I said that prayer, and then I felt so light. It was so nice because what I had to confess and what I, I never really knew that my lifestyle would is really like sunny. You understand what I'm yes, saying? Yes. So once I got to know what I don't know all the technical terms as yet, the different sins, but once I realized that actually what I'm doing is a sin and I need to confess about it. Yes. I, and once I confessed, I felt so good, I felt so light that it actually made me bit more happy in my soul, oh, let me put it that way. And with the, when I went before I became confirmed, now this year of Holy Saturday, where I became, conf I was confirmed then, and I went for my confession, I felt good, I felt that I belong, I felt that I, I, I am okay. And also with this, I think being aware of what Catholic faith is all about, where it started, and that it's really 
coming from Jesus step down to others, to us, to me, to them. So it made me realize that what all my actions, I have to think before I react because I must now think in line with what Jesus actually wants for me. You understand what I'm saying? That is how my life is now at the moment. It's like that. You are watching Karibu Nyumani with Father Khaole Nguenya. To your viewers at home, I don't know if you are becoming part of this program or yet, but now when she was narrating her life experience and the power of the sacrament of confession, what kept on coming to my mind is the story of the prodigal son when he said, I shall go to my father and tell him I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. I no longer deserve to be called my son, your, your son. It really came to my mind because you really can relate with it when you realize that you cannot really say I have converted without you really going for the sacrament of confession. Without you really feeling that I have been, I have been absolved of my sins. Without you saying I have been forgiven. Confession is also about forgiveness of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, the, the, the abundant mercy of God. Your story is so beautiful, Miss Debbie. And you viewers also, you can become part of this program. You can become part of this program by uh, engaging in, in what Radio Veritas call uh, Word on the Street. Share with us your experiences, your feelings by interacting on the program called Word on the Street. Miss Debbie Simons. Getting back to you, I'm really pleased. I'm really happy to hear of your story and the power of the sacrament of conversion. And I feel you may not, you said you don't have the technical words there, but that is the technical word when you say, I am now feeling light. That is when you say, I'm in a state of grace. I do believe your curiosity is now aroused. Now we are taking a break. And before we go to the break, remember, we still have got a lot. Miss um, Debbie has got a lot to share. Even how her family played a role in helping her to become a convert, in helping her to come to the house of the Lord. Stay tuned to learn more from Miss Debbie and her life experience. In this house, there's no stranger. In this house, we pray for a living. Since 1999 to infinity, with St. Michael, we move. With, With God, God, we are unshakable. From the voice to the visuals. Welcome back, welcome back. We welcome you to the house of the Lord. We are still here with Miss Debbie Simons. Before the break, we were learning more from her about the power of the sacrament of confession and how it really helped her to attain a state of grace where she felt light and where she felt that now she belongs to the fold. It was beautiful learning from her about the power of confession. And even us, people who are Catholics who are in this house, we ought to be taking quite serious notes on the power of confession. Now, in this juncture, at this juncture, we want to be listening more of the sermons of Cyrene. Those people who are helping you in your spiritual journey. Those people who were behind you, those people who were helping you to come back to the Catholic fold. Those people who were like um interested in seeing a spiritual growth do you have such people yes i do um my sister like i mentioned before and her husband uh, uh christine and then edwin they when i had questions i asked them and then also father ron he helped me quite a lot because i couldn't attend all the rci classes okay so there was a young lady in the class who actually recorded the lesson for me. Yes. Then she used to forward the lesson to me. Her name is Ada. And then, like I mentioned, I start uh, with the EWTN. There's this one show um, that they, Why Are You Not a Catholic? Yes. It's also a call-in show. And this uh, who, the guy who answers is then Dr. Anderson. So he answered quite a lot of questions that I had. So I used to, it's like when I had this question, he told the, tea, the thief on the cross, uh, I'll be with you in paradise tonight. Yeah. And then I couldn't understand that because in the creed it says he went into hell. And then he explained um, 
when he explained the answer, we actually said that no, he didn't actually go into the hell of the damned. He went into what is like sort of purgatory or something to that. That's how I understood it. It's like a holding cell where everybody was there. So he actually went there to actually relieve them from there and take them then to heaven. Like beautiful, Moses beautiful, and beautiful. Abraham and everybody was there. Yes. So then they went with him to heaven. That's that how is, come why he said yeah. that you will be with me in paradise. Because, yes. you know, once you start hearing all these things and listening, then the Bible starts making sense. Beautiful. So it started making sense to me in that way that other people then ask questions and he answered them and i could understand better beautiful so beautiful. with all this knowledge and stuff i had i then said i am doing the right thing i'm still on the right path because then the bible started making sense because you read the bible and you don't really understand what you're reading so if somebody explains it to you and they explain it to you in one word like yes. i said Different priests, um, they send us the sermons, especially with COVID. Everybody used to make sermons and send it to as an encouragement. Yes. So the, there was Catholic priests that used to send messages or sermons what on was, the days. Was he the priest? There was uh, Father Sia Me, okay. there was Father Mary Jo from Cape yes, Town, yes. and then there's also Father Timberani from KZA. They need to hear their names being spoken, <laughs> to see, to really hear, feel that now we were the Simons of Siren, yes. we were helping, yes. our, our, we were taking care of our fold, we were shepherds. Yes, yes it's Father who? It was Father Siame. Yes. He started. He, I used to read, listen to his first, mm -hmm. and then um, Father Mary Jo was added, and then I started listening yes. to Father Timbalane. Mm -hmm. Timbalane. Yes, growing in faith disease, someone's called. Yes. And then there was also a Afrikaans uh, Catholic priest that used to send messages, but I don't know what his name is. Mm -hmm. And then the, the I used to then watch the daily mess on, on TV yes. because I had the opportunity to so I used to watch that yeah. then because they all spoke in the same it's different people but they actually gave the same message Beautiful. then only afterwards I realized that because the Catholics has got this thing that is called a dogma or something so mm. I, then I realized okay so when you go to Pre, to become a priest or something you were then told okay when this part of the bible is the, this passage is, is what you must preach on this is how you should, should approach it mm. then i realized okay so it's not man's interpretation it has come down from what jesus told the disciples and mm. that is how i then understood it mm. and then i also heard about the fathers of the church and then i heard about saint august uh, saint saint augustus of who taught you about and the fathers of the church the, the, these people the on priests. tv <laughs> oh beautiful 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 yeah. father actually told me about the covenant which i found very very interesting where he said like the there was the old covenant between adam and eve and then that it it was broken and then Jesus came and then the new covenant was formed by him. So that was very interesting for me where I could actually then understand more as to what is happening, you see. So it made a lot of sense and the beautiful, reading and all that. Beautiful. Yes. So if we're yeah. having uh, ample time, I'll be more like ex uh, even helping to, to augment or to put more flesh into what they taught. But it seems like you are well seasoned. Um, but when you talk about uh, dogma, Debbie, those are set of teachings that normally they are promulgated by the Pope and yes. the Catholic will say maybe doctrine, let us put it as, as doctrine. Yes. What we wanted to say more, more specifically, it is what is called systematic theology. That we, we as Catholic priests, we have a way, systematic theology, we have a way of saying things in the tone of the church. Yes. So that we don't see things and um, you find that what you are seeing is not what the church profess. Yes. So systematic theology, you will find our messages not to be far 
not to be disconnected from what we'll be saying or from the context of the text that are put we'll be trying to come up with something that is almost similar that is called systematic theology okay. so we thank those sermons of series who played a role in your life and even now i love even how they explained how jesus uh, liberated uh, even those people who were before his time the, the liberation and the explanation behind the credo part where it says he descended to the dead. So that means they taught you a lot and your questions were mostly like answered. Yes. Now, uh, we are still interested in the other sermons of Sirens, if they are there. Like, take for instance, the family, the family, the family means Debbie Sermons. People in your family, um, were they happy? Uh, do, were you getting any encouragement from your family when you... Uh, enter the Catholic fold when you wanted to come to the Catholic faith, faith were you having people who were like a role models there? Um, I would say yes and no. There was a lot that wanted to know why and it's not necessary and it's very similar and all that and then I started explaining but it's not similar and then because of also all these things that I was reading I could understand why it is different okay. because when I learned about Calvin and all that then I could understand why it's different from where I used to be yes. and but then when my sister-in-law is a priest and then when I said to her that I am thinking of becoming a Catholic Beautiful. and then she said you know the teachings of the Catholic Church I also admire it and I like it if I wasn't where I am now today, I would most probably also have been, I would most probably also turn to be a Catholic. And with that, then I realized that she's a priest. She knows, she understands what I'm trying to do, why I would like to be a Catholic. And with her telling me that it is fine, you can do it, it gave me just that part of, energy that I needed to take me the last, I would say, the final step to say, no, I am ready to be a Catholic and that is why. And then there was this other guy that I always used to talk to, but he is not a Catholic, but I used to talk to him. He knows a lot. He knows a lot about theology and he knows everybody. When I mention somebody, then he says, oh, he does this, you know, okay. so he knows. And then when I told him, then he said, I'm happy for you. He, yes, he encouraged me and he actually said, I'm happy for you. And you sound happy. You sound enthusiastic to be learning more. Amen. And and so that is why I said no. No matter, there is the naysayers, but there was also a lot of positive people behind me that actually pushed me and said, I can do it, you know. And every now and then when I would feel a bit low, then Father Ron would out of the blue just send a message with my sister oh, to come or I would hear a message in church beautiful. or something like that, that made it possible for me to do that. See. Wow! To our viewers at home, you are listening to Miss Debbie Simmons in our program Karibu Nyumbani. Now we were learning more about those people who became a point of connection between her and God. Those people were sent to her life by God to help her have a true conversion. Now we are happy that God really used those people to help you in making this uh, metanoia, this radical change of heart. Yeah. Yeah, where you say now I am living where I am I cannot be in a comfort zone I am coming to the house of the Lord and we are here to say welcome and we are happy and we are pleased and um, out of curiosity but before that um, the covenant the covenant the covenant the old covenant yes. was written on tablets yes. and um, it was smeared with the blood of the lambs yes. It is in Exodus. It will be explained more and more in terms of law in Deuteronomy yeah. and um, maybe in the book of Leviticus. So it is that Old Testament. The New Testament is the one that now it is sealed with the blood of Christ. Yes. yes. I wanted it to be more, 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 more clear when you talked about the, the covenant. I picked it when you said it. And yes. I realized that, yeah, 
those people who are teaching you, the sermons of uh, Cyrene, who I'm talking about, the priests that are coming to your life when you are at low, uh, those people who are coming to your life when you need such kind of spiritual nourishment, when you need such kind of spiritual upliftment, they are yeah. there for you to help you. And we thank God for those sermons of Cyrene. Now, yes. getting to the curious part. <laughs> when you were at your initial um, place in your comfort zone, in your place of worship, before you converted, um, what could they have sparked? What was the, 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 the longing inside you? What caused that thing to say, I have to leave where I am and come to my father's house? Um, I would say it was that I just took it. Ah, well, I, I believe in Jesus and I go to church when I have to, when I want to, when it's cold, I don't want to go, or you know, those type of things. I never took it that I must actually make it a part of my life. Yes. I never took it that my faith is supposed to be part of my life. It's yes. supposed to be the front and then I must follow. So it was just that, oh well, they don't even miss me in church. It doesn't matter. You understand what yes. I'm saying? So then once I started learning, the more I learned and the more knowledge I gathered, the more I realize that I have to change my life so that it is in line with what Jesus wants us to be like. And that is what made it, well, and that is what is making it even more exciting for me to want to go and to be in church every opportunity that I get. Amen. It's that kind of thing now. Amen. So like in the afternoons, I'm able to go and just sit in church for a half an hour Amen. before I go to work. Because I heard about the adoration of Jesus and the adoration of the of the body of Christ. So I also then asked Father Ron about it. Then he said, it, the body doesn't need to be exposed for you to have adoration. You can just actually have adoration by just being in his presence. Uh -huh. And that is what I've been doing. And I, leave, I only start work at half past six. Mm -hmm. But like... Could have asked for I'm out of the house already so that I can just go and have the time sitting in church, just sitting there. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. You can see that, um, I may say the soul was longing, longing, longing to be in the presence of God. Sometimes um, some things can come from without. Even when we learn about uh, the types of prayer, maybe vocal, meditative, when you go to contemplative prayer, you realize that it can come from without. A, we call it the, the power of God. Contemplation. The, the spirit was longing. The spirit was feeling that now I'm in desolate areas. And now the spirit wanted to be found. And now you are found. And we yes. thank God. And we welcome you. We still welcome you to the house of the Lord. Karibu Nyumbani. We welcome you to the house of the Lord. Now, to our viewers, before we go, I want you to take into cognizance that you may be thinking that um, the longings of the spirit you understand them all of them it should be your quest to find your soul if it is appeased if you have got questions ask questions about your faith because our faith is systematic you don't believe just by saying we believe it's systematic we can reason with our faith coming up next where where i am at now where i can where i'm able to say i pray for the people who's lost loved ones I pray for the babies that is so small, for the parents, for safety liveries. I've even gone as far as doing some research and I found that <laughs> and I found wow. that Saint Gerard is the person we must ask for intercession for safety liveries of mothers and yes. the welfare of babies. Would you like to advertise on this channel? Contact us on the number below.